These are the notes for LT5 in the sound and wave unit. LT5 says, I can compare and contrast the constructive and destructive interference of sound waves. All right, there's some pretty serious uses of this principle. And it's, it's going to be really important that we keep all these concepts separate. So when we talk sound reflection and refraction in LT3, when we talk resonance in LT4, constructive, destructive interference, entirely separate from those. So let's just start out with the definition. Interference. It is the overlapping of sound waves. And it could be light, it's just that in this unit we're talking sound. So the overlapping of waves perhaps would be a better, better definition. If something is going to overlap, think about interference. The prefix inter means to come between something. So think about if somebody interrupts your conversation. As annoying as that is, that means they came between you and the other person. If somebody's interfering in your life, all right, they are, they are right there. They are causing difficulties because of their presence. Right? They're right there. So to overlap, it is really important, this gets missed a lot, that we know those sound waves must be in the same place at the same time. Okay, same place at the same time. That is the only way we can have interference. So let's talk about why we care. There's two major types, as I've already mentioned. Constructive is first. Most of us have played with Legos as a kid. Or maybe, maybe you still like them. You go home and play with some Legos. I don't know. So if you construct something out of Legos, you build it up. Right? We're building something up. So when we talk about constructive interference within, within the sound arena at least, we are talking about increasing the amplitude. Amplitude is energy, energy, loudness, all right? So constructive interference is used to make a sound lo larger, louder. Louder, larger is a bad, bad use of terms there. So we want to increase the loudness. We do not want to change frequency or wavelength, right? So a, a good example of this, just think like an amplifier, microphone, if you have somebody on stage, and granted, you do, if it was me on stage, it wouldn't really matter, but if you've got somebody on stage singing, you do not want to distort their voice. You simply want to make them louder so that, every, so that the audience can hear them. So here's how this works. We know that sound, wave has, sound waves have compressions and rarefactions. So try to draw this as pretty as we can. So here's a compression, here's a rarefaction. Here's a compression, here's a rarefaction. This could be the sound wave that somebody is producing on stage. And, you know, they're not, when they sing, they're not screaming at the top of their lungs here. So just 30 decibels, let's say. Now, 30 decibels is not going to carry to the back of the auditorium. So we need to amplify their voice. So what this technology does is it takes a compression that is generated. So somebody's up there singing, they're, they're generating compressions and rarefactions and they match it with, a, with another wave with the exact same frequency. So maybe like this. And it would be lined up perfectly. Okay, so this one would be generated by the amplifier. And we know that there's a volume control. So maybe we set that volume to 100 decibels. That means the resultant wave that's the one the audience is going to hear, so we'll call it the resultant, would be 30 decibels plus the 100 decibels from the amplifier, which means that person on stage would, would appear to be singing at 130 decibels. So think about those rock concerts you go to where you're doing hearing damage, it doesn't hurt, but that singer isn't up there just belting it out at the top of their lungs. They're, they're, voice is being amplified and it's being amplified by overlapping matching parts overlapping compressions overlapping rarefaction overlapping compressions overlapping rarefactions all right that is called the resultant wave that is constructive interference so pretty simple very useful if we want to make something louder the other type of interference destructive also very useful 
Sometimes you see the word destructive and you automatically think, ooh, this is bad. It's not bad. Sometimes we need to make things quieter. So let's draw the same wave as up before. And let's say that well, we're going to come up with a little story here. And let's pretend that you have annoying siblings. Again, I was the only child, so things are pretty quiet in my world. But now that I'm a parent, I understand the pain that my friends talked about in terms of bickering kids in the back of a car on a car ride. All right, so I get it. If, you're, if you are one of those people that have annoying siblings, because we know it's not you, it's them, has to be their fault, then I understand what you're talking about. So let's pretend. Family vacation time, all right? And here you are in the back seat. You've got, let's say, two annoying siblings beside you. You're going to put on some headphones. And not just any headphones. These are noise-canceling headphones. Those are horrible is what they are, but that's my, my gosh. Let me make this one bigger here. So we've got some noise-canceling headphones. I've got to tell you what these are not. They are not AirPods. They are not earbuds, okay? They are not like those orange things you stick in your ears to block sound from going in. These actually have electronic chips in them, okay? The category is called anti-noise technology. If you go to Target or whatever and look for these, they're going to say noise-canceling headphones. Not noise-reducing. Those are just like foam things that stop, but noise-canceling. So you, here's your annoying sibling. Here's their sound wave, okay? And they're annoying. They're probably kind of loud. So 60 decibels. So they create a compression, a rarefaction. A compression, a rarefaction. If you've got a great set of these headphones, then what would happen is, so we're going to put a plus here, and I'm going to draw an arrow this way. As one of your siblings' compressions enters the outside of this headset, so this earpiece, that earpiece will emit the opposite part of the wave. It will emit a perfectly matching refraction. So anytime a compression comes into that earpiece, it will essentially flip it and emit a rarefaction. Then here comes a rarefaction. It'll emit a compression. Well, here comes a compression. Okay, it'll emit a rarefaction. There's a rarefaction. It emits a compression. So RC, RC. If you overlap perfectly non-matching parts, then the best noise-canceling headphones can give you absolute silence. They can match these perfectly at the exact same decibel levels, exact same frequency so it doesn't distort anything. That resultant could be 60 decibels minus 60 decibels, zero decibels. You would hear nothing that is being said outside of you. Now realize, your music is still streaming through your Bluetooth connection or whatever. Okay, that's still streaming. But outside noise can be blocked perfectly. So if a, maybe one sibling, here comes their compression. Well, here's your other annoying brother or sister. And there's their rarefaction. Okay. Your headset, then, would emit the opposite. It would emit a compression. Yeah. Um, these things are crazy expensive to get the absolute best ones okay, outside of my budget, but there are some that work reasonably well. But realize, if you just have a set of earbuds and you have them in your ear and you're like, oh, but Lens, I can't hear very much happening around me, it's because your ear canal is plugged, all right? That doesn't mean that they are actually anti-noise, noise canceling. These ones, there has to be a chip that it makes an artificial wave that flips it to cancel things out. So. This is kind of a whatever example. It's not that important in the grand scheme of things, but this, th this technology is hugely important because think about heavy equipment operators. Okay, that you're working around machinery that every single day for 30 years, you may need something more than just those orange plugs. If you've got to be able to talk to your crew, you can't have those orange plugs in. So what well, these guys, there's, there's technology now where it, it, it has evolved to block out the decibel level and the frequency of the machinery, yet allow 
interaction with people because obviously that's a different frequency of, of, of sound. Um, I'm going to call them shooting earmuffs. I know that's probably not even close to the technical word. Um, like the ones that I have out to my parents' house if I go out and shoot guns are like these big blue things and there's tons of foam in them. That's not what I'm talking about. Those are just sound insulators. Those just stop or mostly stop the, um, the sound from the gun from coming in to my ear. But those are not actually noise canceling. There are electronic versions of these. So if there's no batteries in your, in your earmuffs or your ear protection, then it's not noise canceling. But th there's some that have chips in them where it perfectly blocks out the shot of the gun and you can sit there and talk to your friend just like you don't have anything on your ears at all. So that's another example. In auditoriums, usually in most places of the auditoriums you try to avoid this. There's something called dead spots. Okay, think about if you go to your favorite movie or a movie you've been wanting to see. You don't want to see you don't want to sit in a dead spot. Because a dead spot would be a location where, let's say, uh, maybe it's Brad Pitt. I don't know. who. I know that he's old to you guys. So whoever it is that you want to see is talking on the big screen. You don't want to be it sitting in a spot where, let's say, there's an echo. And as, as Brad Pitt or whoever's compression comes through, a rarefaction blocks it out. Right? You don't want that overlap to happen. There's... When, pe when engineers design auditoriums, they try to minimize echoes partly because of this concept. You don't want sound waves crossing each other because you could have places where the noise is extremely loud because of constructive. You could have places where it's too quiet because of destructive. Um, so that, that would be a situation where you would hear nothing. I've been told that we have a spot in the Shepherd Auditorium backstage somewhere where it's, it's for the most part a dead spot. You can't really hear anything going on. It's not just because, like, okay, it's, like, really thick walls or whatever. It's actually where sound is reflected just right so that compressions and rarefactions overlap. So when you think dead spots, we're just talking areas where there's destructive interference. All right. Again, keep the separate from refraction, from resonance, from echolocation, reflection. All right. got to do some thinking on this stuff. Good luck.